Here I would like to show you the MO diagram for an octahedral iron 2 plus complex, iron 2 plus with six water molecules. So how these interactions look like? The most simple one is the combination of the metal S orbital in the middle here together with the group orbital that has all ligands in the same phase. So this complete symmetric and you will learn later that in group theory we call this combination A symmetry. The next one is the combination of a set of three, three group orbitals of the ligand with three p orbitals of the metal. And this looks like something like this, the p set or the px, sorry, in the middle here overlap with the two ligand orbitals. And the same in on all three axes, so we get three combinations <coughs> having the same energy. Now the interesting part starts here, interaction with the D, metal D electrons, orbitals, sorry. We can combine two group orbitals together with x square minus y square here and another with the z square orbital. The remaining 3d orbitals that look like this, they have their lobe between the axes, have no partner on the ligand side, so they remain non-bonding. And now one more thing we have to consider. The anti-bonding combination of these two come close in energy to the non-bonding and the anti-bonding is again the x square minus y square but now out of phase with the ligands and the z square but opposite phase to the ligands. So these two orbitals are anti-bonding and the six electrons, <coughs> sorry, from the metal, they will go either in these three levels, non-bonding levels or in the high, high spin case, three will go here four will go here, sorry, and two will go up to the antibonding. It depends on the energy difference, as we learned from the crystal field theory. So what happens in the case, the ligands here have also filled P orbitals. For example, halogen minus chlorine, chlorine. Okay, there we have an additional interaction we should have a look at. First again, we just draw the interaction between the ligand group orbitals here, as before. Only the interaction with the D, metal D levels. Okay, remember we have two orbitals that fit together and we form a bonding and anti-bonding interaction. Okay, same as before, I leave out S and P metal orbitals. And before, the remaining 3D levels, X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, had no interaction with the ligand. But now, if the ligand has pi orbitals, there will be an additional interaction. Okay, how can we imagine for example, I look at the D XZ orbital, which could not interact with the ligand orbitals before, but now if the like a chlorine have P orbitals like this, filled with electron pair, then these p orbitals of chlorine can overlap with the d metal orbitals like this. And this means now I get a bonding and again anti-bonding interaction between these two orbitals. We have three cases 
for x set, x set, x y and y set. And then we have an antibonding case here. So again, for example, if I have a D6 metal, I have six electrons here. And from the chlorine, I also have six electrons, which will go here. And again, I get the typical picture from crystal field theory, two over six. But now we realize that both of these are antibonding orbitals. And second, what is more important, this distance here, the old delta O that we had before, becomes smaller, smaller compared to the case when we did not have these pi orbitals on the ligand. So that explains in MO theory why, for example, Cl minus or all the ligands that have pi electrons have lower crystal field splitting. This is because of this additional interaction. Now finally there is another case where the ligands could have so-called pi star antibonding orbitals. Okay, we have our usual interaction with the three D levels and the group orbitals. And now pi star, what does this mean? Typical example would be carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has an unfilled empty pi star level. Would look like this. And we see that this symmetry again will fit with the metal D symmetry, D orbital, similar in the P case, P case before. Now the trick here is that these orbitals are empty, they are pi star, empty orbitals, and if the metal has filled has electrons in these D levels, it will give electron density to the ligand. So this is something we call back bonding. Normally the electrons from the bond come from the ligand. Okay, these ligands orbitals are full and they give their electrons to the metal. Now in this case is the one case that is opposite Metal D electrons can go into the empty pi star levels of the ligand. So this one is empty. No electrons. Again, three cases. We have uh, the case of X, Y, X set and Y set. So that means, again, D6 example. The six electrons of the metal will go here and now this molecule, this orbital is bonding, but the antibonding case is empty. And this is also antibonding. Empty depends on high spin or low spin. Again, this typical picture from crystal field theory, two over three, but now because of this bonding interaction here, the delta O becomes much bigger than before. So this level here goes down in energy. So we get a delta O which is bigger and we learned from the crystal field theory that ligands like carbon monoxide or CN minus, especially cyanide, they cause a very big, the strongest ligand field splitting. And with this explanation, we can also, we have an explanation now <coughs> from MO theory why this should be the case.